During the next few minutes, we will learn how manual pollinations are made in species of cucurbita, the squash and pumpkins. All squash and pumpkins originated in the New World, that is, the Americas. The various cucurbita species have now spread around the world and are important sources of beta-carotene in the human diet. Plant breeding programs in both the public and private sector make use of artificial pollinations to combine favorable traits into new varieties of squash and pumpkins. In this series of slides, I will be demonstrating the process using plants of tropical pumpkin from a breeding program at the University of Puerto Rico at Mayaguez. This particular species is Cucurbita moscata and includes the butternut squashes. However, the same technique can be used for any Cucurbita species. Before we begin, it is important to recognize that squash and pumpkins are monaceous plants, that is, each plant carries two types of flowers, male or staminate and female or pistillate flowers. On the left, we have a male flower and on the right, we have a female flower. Notice that only the female flower has a small fruit or ovary at its base. After pollination, the female flower will develop into a fruit with seeds. In nature, insects carry pollen from the male flowers to the female flowers. Since we want to make a controlled pollination, both the male and female flowers must be protected from contamination before they open. Flowers must either be covered or tied shut the day before they open. Flowers that will open the next day are swollen and slightly yellow in color at the tip. In our breeding program, we use a small waxed bag to cover the male flowers. Alternatives include the use of a string or a clip. It may be convenient to indicate where the male flower is to be used the next day by writing the pedigree on the bag. The standard is to write the female first, followed by the male. In this example, the male flower is covered on plant 14 and will be used to pollinate a female flower on plant number 2. The female flower must be tied or covered. Here a rubber band is attached to the bud the day before the flower is to open. String or a clip can also be used. By the following morning, both the male and female flowers will have expanded and attempted to open. The covered male flower is pulled from the plant and carried to the female flower to be pollinated. The corolla, or flower petals, are carefully torn open to expose the anthers and pollen in the male flower and the receptive stigma of the female flower. The pollen is then spread over the stigma of the female flower, completing pollination. The same bag that was used to cover the male flower can now be used to cover the pollinated female flower to prevent contamination. A plastic tag is placed on the stem just below the note of the pollinated flower. The tag should indicate what type of pollination was made and the date of the pollination. A flag is used to mark the location of completed pollinations. The bag protecting the pollination can be removed a couple of days later. We use a variety of colors of flags to mark flowers for pollination. Immature female buds are marked with blue flags. White flags are used to mark female flowers that have been prepared for next day pollination. The next day a yellow flag is used to mark a completed pollination. Following pollination, the fruit will begin to grow rapidly if pollination was successful. About 10 days post pollination, we exchange the yellow flag for an orange flag to mark successful pollinations. Viable seed can be harvested about 30 days after pollination. However, seed quality will be much better if 40 or 45 day old fruit are harvested or if fruit are harvested and stored for a week or two. I hope you have found this introduction into the world of plant breeding and pollination useful.